Okay, I'm back in that room. Can you see me? No. <laughs> no. Well, I scheduled for this. That's why, you know, I'm not kind of losing my mind. But because uh, the thing is, what I want to do is see your process, see how you do stuff. And this creates a screen share. But uh, we can kind of come back to this. Cause, okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me get back to. All right. That's still going. Cool. What I want to do is. Well, we can't check out your office right now. Uh, we can do that. When you're, how are you searching for these machines? What What is your territory? How far do you go? How big? Everywhere. I, I don't do Canada. Okay, let's get this straight. You're searching for these machines for across 50 states? Pretty much, yeah. So... Like, so, for instance, right now there's... Um, I'm talking to three people. One is in Florida. The other one's in Alabama. And then I just talked to, okay, so Florida, Alabama, and there's, I can't remember where the other place is. I don't remember. But the, the woman in, Al, um, oh, uh, Alabama, and then uh, Louisiana. So the woman from Louisiana, um, I just, um, we just finalized how much I'm going to buy the machine for. Um, some people are very open and willing to ship, and other people are not. But what I found is that the, the people that I deal with, they tend to be very trusting, and they're more open to that, especially if I give them my phone number and they can call me. So with the woman from um, Louisiana, um, I'm going to, um, she sent me a, a PayPal. I'll pay for it. Then probably later on today, she'll send everything to a UPS store, and then I pay, pay for it through UPS and have it delivered to my house. Okay. All right. So w when you're looking for these machines, you're looking for things that are broken or you're just looking for cheap. H how do you decide? Oh, no, I, I won't take them broken. Um, you know, good, good condition at, um, basically the price point is everything for me. I don't want to ever buy a machine that's over 3000 because that cuts into my profit. Okay. Better. And that's what I wanted that's what I wanted to discuss with you is because I mean I can buy machines all day long for three grand. Um maybe I'll only be able to make a profit um for about maybe seven hundred dollars. If you buy that three thousand. Yeah, if I buy it at three thousand because I also have to look into shipping. Um, so I don't know if it's worth it or not to do that. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Cause this is why I wanted to get into, I was under the impression that you were buying and flipping these machines in Maryland. I didn't know you were everywhere. Oh, I look everywhere. You look everywhere. Now, where do you sell? Um, mostly locally. Okay. So. Everything is... I w I'm, I'm actually willing to sell anywhere and ship it, but what I haven't been able to do is convince some of these people that, you know, it works, I'll videotape it um, as it's moving, because that's how I've bought machines before, you know. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are so skeptical because there are so many con artists out there there and it it is you know a, a pricey piece of machinery that people just don't want to you know get taken advantage of. Okay, okay. So let's going back. You get them from anywhere, but you only sell them locally in the Maryland, DC. What's local for you? 
Um, the MVB, Maryland, Virginia, D.C. area. Um, I, but, but that's where, that's the only place that I list it. So, but I have people coming from Ohio, um, eight hours away, from Connecticut, from New York, from Pennsylvania. You're taking me back to my eBay days here with that. I have folks do that stuff. Okay, all right, so this this is what I want to know. Okay, so you get them from anywhere, but you were only listing them there. How does your sales process work? Once someone says, hey, I like the machine, I'm coming to get it, they meet you at the house. Well, how, how do you handle all that? Yeah, normally it's, it's, it's very effortless and very seamless in that they come to the house, they take a look at it, by the time they make the commitment to drive all the way out to where they're I live, buy. they're going to buy. They're going to buy it. Only twice have I had people, and my husband called them, he has nicknames for everybody, tourists. Like, for instance, this one guy came like three times to my house to look at this machine. He finally bought it. Um, but I just had a week at um, a, a woman this past week. She came to my house three times. I spent like 10 hours with her. I was just, I was so upset with myself. And she wound up like saying, oh, this is moving too fast. I'm like, well, what did you think? You know, and I was very nice to her. And I'm like, well, this is Craigslist. You see something, if you like it, you have to buy it or it's not going to be there. I'm like, don't buy it if you're not sure. There's no pressure here, but... Like, I was really confused as to what she was thinking. Um, but it's um, very rarely does this happen. Um, and I could, I could more or less screen the people that do this. But they want to come over and they want to maybe bring a couple of garments with them. So I can, like, teach them and how it works. But then they don't buy the machine. Gotcha. Okay. This that, is... there, that's only happened to me twice. But this woman who came, I think she really wants one. Um, it, it's just, she's just, um, just a very scared, hesitant person, I think, in her nature. So, she, you know, with anything, it's a leap of faith. And she just didn't want to take it. So... Okay, okay. Some you just said, like, if they're coming from three, four, five, six, eight hours, they're going to buy if there's nothing grossly wrong with it. I'm going to take it, your, your flakes were local or fairly close? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go back to the 10 hours that this woman, because you, you were saying you spent 15, three hours a day that they include just looking, looking, talking. What's your whole, how does that work out? Oh, my gosh. So, normally I have people that actually come with some knowledge base. She had zero other than she had a, she has um, a, an alterations business. So, at least she has a, um, she had a um, very strong sewing knowledge. So, it goes from very basic of turning on the machine and showing, like, just the minimal maintenance that has to be done every day. Um, I'm very honest. I show them how many hours the machine has on it, what the stitch count is, and what it can do. Um, you know, I always tell them that it has to have some kind of programming software or you're going to be extremely limited in what you can do. Um... And then we just go from there, and, you know, and normally I can stitch anything out, and they're very happy with it. Normally I do, like, um, a test run of every single needle. If everything runs well, people are just like, okay, I'll do it. But this woman wanted me to, like, do very specific things for her, for her dog. <laughs> um I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's, it, it's honestly not a problem. But what I tried to convey to her is that when I got my first machine, I taught myself. But then there were some, like, little um, subtle things I needed to figure out. Um, and I actually had to pay someone locally from the quilt 
store that sells these machines. And it was $60 an hour. Okay, and let's she, stop. Let's and she, st- and oh. she still wanted me to try to help her. And I'm like, that's $600 of my time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. I can understand. You're still scarred by that experience. I totally get it. All right. Uh, <laughs> how did you get into all of this the, with the embroidery machines, embroidering? Um... Excuse me. Um, so um, I have three children, and because of my husband working, her, his hours are so erratic that I couldn't go back and do ultrasound. I was an ultrasound tech. <laughs> so there was no way that was going to happen, and I just saw this machine online, um, dirt cheap, um, and it looked like an embroidery machine, I mean an ultrasound machine to me. And I'm like, I can do this. Um, so I called, it was a production company that was no longer in, um, existence in Utah and they had six machines, super nice guy. I'm like, okay, well, he's like, I don't know if it runs or if it doesn't run, which is how well, what this person did, she went from machine to machine and when it would stop working, she went to the next one and they had never fixed them. They never got them serviced. So I just asked him to, um, send me the one that was aesthetically um, the nicest looking machine. At the time, I had no idea that, you know, um, hours or stitch count was a consideration. And uh, so I paid for it, and he sent it to me. And then probably 16 hours later, I got it up and running just by reading the manual and cleaning it um, and doing that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so how many years have you been doing this? Um, six or seven. Seven years experience, and you just talked yourself. But I haven't, I've only been selling these um, since, I think, August. Oh, no, 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 this is all relevant. Seven years of experience because, all right, now this, this, this is good because I was just wondering, you know, what you were doing, how you were getting it, so you're already prepared to sell nationally. You just are having a problem of getting people to trust you to buy the machine. So, okay. Uh, how big are these things? Um, they're approximately 76 pounds. Um, and let's see, maybe they're um, uh, 20, maybe 24 by 24. Okay. okay. In diameter and probably height wise, um, maybe about 20, 20 inches high. All right. How often do you make stuff with these things? You still sew quite a bit, or are you just? Don't... I really no, no. I really don't like to. I mean, I I do things um, for charity. Okay. And for the homeschooling co-op that my children go to, because um, the woman generates probably about a thousand dollars. Um, a year doing that, so I do that for free, um, and I do whatever my friends want, but nothing, and that's it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, so you don't like doing that anymore. Um, it's, it's so mundane, and, um, I just, it's, it's not as dynamic, I guess. Okay, well, here here's some uh, suggestions just when we're thinking about it. All right, because uh, this is what I got. Because so you answer that. What is your search radius? What is your, where do you sell? Since you have seven years' experience, uh, a way for you to market these machines is to show how they work. How many machines do you have in the inventory right now? Right now, um, I have... Um Three machines that I'm willing to sell. Um, no, that, excuse me. Four machines, and then I'm buying another one today. Okay. What I think you should do, and this is a recommendation, is all right. Let's go. How many? Cam- do you have a nice camera? Do you have like a camcorder? Mhm, I do. Okay, you have a microphone. For the camcorder? Mm. Or does it have a mic input? Is sure, it? of course. Okay, because this is how you can kind of get past the whole 
uh, I'm not there. I can't trust you. Do a review on the machine on YouTube. But what you're going to do, because this, you're not going to get like crazy views. That, that's not the whole point. The point is you're going to put the machine, you're going to put this machine model number, you're going to put all the features and stuff in the descriptions. And then you're going to open up an online store. And then every time you do a review, it's like, hey, I just got this machine in. And you're going to kind of jazz up the channel a little bit. You're going to have to sew some stuff. That's why I asked you if you like to sew. Because wait, 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 I'm sorry. You're gonna, I'm going to have to sew what? Make some stuff. Oh. Uh, have you heard of the, okay. of the, let's see, what is it, the North Star Quilling Company? I forget. Of the, course. Well, you, you know her story. She actually bought the building that J, James Cash Penny started J.C. Penny in a long time ago. She bought that building. She has her stuff in that store. Um, okay. Quilting is pretty big. For you to sell a machine, you have to sell the benefits because it's just a big hunk of 76 pounds of metal. But if it's uh -huh. something that makes your kids' lives easier, because I'm seeing a lot of people, I can't remember her name, but like you, she started sewing clothes for her kids and people liked what she did, that she actually started a children's clothing company in North Carolina. Um, so the marketplace is big because you want people who want to see like the, the benefit of this stuff. Now, I would not stop doing what you're doing because this would be an add on to get some of those, uh, national sales because 76 pounds, I'm thinking FedEx, that's what 80 bucks to ship these days. My shipping calculations are way off. You know what, it, and I don't know how to judge this, and this is something I need help with. It can run me anywhere from $250 to $500 for the same piece of equipment. Oh, I can tell you, tell you why that. Because when they go to the UPS store, they're, they're actually doing the packaging, right? That's where a lot of the expense is in. Um, okay. Yeah. You, as long as you're going to be doing that, you're going to stop because with well, UPS, at least you know they're going to package it to a point that it's not going to be damaged. And if it is damaged, you have recourse with insurance. That's going to be hard okay. to get around because they're doing the packaging. But for shitting out whatever package that, then this is something else, whatever package they send it in, you keep that packaging. And then when you ship it out and go take it to FedEx, is cheaper than UPS. I don't know okay. why, but they are because. That Aaron chair that you're sitting in, I used to be able to ship those for like $39. I'll just take the, the base off of it and put it in the box. Okay. So that's not the hard part for you to ship out. Like getting them in, I can, yeah, that's, that can really kill your margins, 500 bucks for shipping. Um, but that's just one way. Now, another thing is since if you list in another Craigslist that's not local, probably not going to get a lot of traction just this just honestly now oh, how many times a week do you list do you just list your ad once and let it stay up there or do you how do you do that um normally i list it and leave it up there but i don't normally i have it sold normally before the um the ad drops but this is a really bizarre thing that that happened to me about, I think it was in the end of November. There was a woman from Virginia, um, and she drove something like five hours to buy a machine from me. And she has an online store, and she sells these little masks for kids. Um, she wanted to buy a machine, and um, I, I basically said, this is the price, this is what it comes with pick whatever machine you want. I really, you know, it doesn't matter to me. So she picked the one with the, it was basically a brand new machine. It only only had 13 hours on it at the time. And she said she had a pen needle and she just absolutely loved it. And I said, but you, this is the same thing. You can do everything with this one, except without all the bells and whistles, which is absolutely true. So I noticed probably four days later, she listed that machine so now I'm competing with her for the machine that I sold her for forty five hundred with all with like all these accessories, which I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. And now she has it listed for seventy three hundred dollars. Hmm. 
So how do you come up with your pricing? Do you think she's going to sell it for $7,300 or not? There's no way. Okay. No way, because if someone's going to spend seventy three, They can get a new one. They can get a new one for a couple of thousand, yeah. Like, it, that's just absolutely ridiculous. So the way I come up with my pricing is that for, like, this machine that, um, it depends what I buy it for, honestly. If I buy it for 25 I try and sell it for 45 Okay. But then I have all these accessories that go with it. And I, you know, I also say if they're going to get, because a lot of times when you buy a used embroidery machine, you, you know, you don't have the luxury of somebody showing you how to use it. And, you know, if you have any questions or anything, you know, that that's all extra. That's going to cost you extra for lessons. Definitely. And I don't and I don't mind teaching. I mean I, I actually I like that. That's kind of the part that I like the most. Because I used to do that with ultrasound. I used to be um a clinical um kind of instructor. All right, so you don't like to sewing but you have no problem doing the teaching. Not at all. Okay. So going back to but I, I just want to say that um, I'll do whatever it takes. It doesn't matter to me. But, well, like, my end goal is not to have um, a, a full embroidery business where that's what I'm doing all day. Well, no, no. I mean, that's not... No, you want to sell these machines. Uh, I'm very clear on that. You don't want to start an embroidery shop. All right. Um, no, no. Real clear on that. Okay. Now, this is something else. What kind of camera do you have? What's the what's the model number on it? Is it like 1080p? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'll have to check. Okay. It's a, it's, it's just a um, it's a little small computer. It's nothing. No, no camera. Your camera. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's 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 just a small little camera. Um, we we had a beautiful one, but unfortunately, it got it got stolen. But. And I know that's really important to have a really great camera to take really nice pictures. Um, and I'm willing to make that investment and get a nice camera. That's okay, well, in a pinch, your iPhone can make some beautiful pictures with the right lighting. That's something I okay. can try to set that up. Because, all right, since you are doing top shelf stuff anyway, what I'm thinking you can do, because t- from, what, from what you're telling me, you put it on Craigslist, someone comes in, they likes it, you're getting some people who have no clue how to use these things, but they want to learn, and then you're spending how many hours teaching them how to use these things? Oh my God, it was ridiculous. I, I, spent, 10, I spent 10 hours with that woman in the course of three days, and she didn't buy anything, but the woman that came from Ohio, I spent eight hours with her, um, and she spent uh, around 5000 Okay. With well, the machine and the accessories. Let's talk about this. You say eight hours. So they come to your house, they're sitting in your house, and you're spending two and three hours with them showing them how the machine works. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm letting, and then I'm letting them thread the machine, problem solve with them, and it's also how the software they get you know, uh, integrates with the embroidery machine and the importance of that and how the hat hoops work and the accessory um, hoops work. So it, it does it does take a while. Do you think you can do that training where they had the machine and you just walked them through it or do you actually need to have the machine in front of you to teach them how to do it? Um, I think, no, I don't think that I would have to be physically there with them. I could walk them through it as long as I was in front of a machine because um, a couple of times, um, Lori, one of the girls that I uh, sold the machine to, she was asking me questions, and um, as long as it didn't deal with the screen, I could help her, but once it, it dealt with the screen, I had to physically be in front of one to kind of work it out. 
You mean screen like a um, little D LSD LCD screen? Exactly. Okay. But I could also do my own. I mean, I could also do my own kind of YouTube videos. That was where I was going with this because what it sounds like is you're doing a lot of work, the same work over and over and over and over and over. I am. So just for your own peace of mind, you should create a training course on how to use these machines. And I wouldn't necessarily, you could put them on YouTube, but I was thinking of private until you get all the kinks out because this adds new value to your machines. You put your machine up on Craigslist. Also, I'm going to have you send me a copy of your ads. And then you say, not only will I sell you the machine at a great price, but I will give you recorded tutorials on how to use it. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking, based on what you're telling me, you can probably add 500 to to $1,000 on top of the price that you're charging now. Because the big issue isn't the machine. The big issue, and this, this is what I learned writing books. Uh, you can give someone a great book for free, but they still have to spend 6 to 12 hours reading it. And when you start talking about those kind of opportunity costs, that's when people start getting leery. Because everyone is just operating from a lot of fear. But by, yeah, I see that this can be really nice for you. By going ahead, and you already know what are the most common questions about this since you've been through this a lot since August. And we're also going to list more frequently. Because clearly people are finding your your machines by search. Because you only list the ad like... You just put one machine up and let that ad expire and usually you sell it before it expires. So that's almost 60 days. And yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's but I, I what I just you know, and what I do sometimes to be honest with you is that um I guess because I'm not that good at listing and all these machines basically are identical. I mean, sometimes with a few variations. But now that I'm just talking to you, I don't think I give enough detail. And probably enough pictures. Okay. Because sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll list the same ad again for just a different machine. But they look identical. It's just no one would know unless they checked the stitch count. Gotcha. Gotcha. And when you list on Craigslist, you list in the Maryland and then people from these other areas find you or... Well, yeah, so it's always um, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. There's one for the DMV. And um, they, of course, these people that find, most of them that find my ad, they basically just put it in, like, a Google search, and it comes up. They don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have to go to, like, Florida Craigslist to find listings of machines. I just, you know, I'll just put, you know, very uh, specific um, idea of what I'm looking for. You know, Craigslist, six needle embroidery machine, and then things come up. Okay. But there was a, there's a gentleman, and I, I, you had mentioned that, um, in a text about eventually having someone do this for me, and I didn't even look for anyone, and there's a gentleman, Jay, and mm -hmm. he bought one of my machines, and he, he's been sending me, like, already alone this week, three ads of machines. Yeah, how did but that I So he bought a machine for me, because when you told me it was this engineer, and he was, like, sending you leads and stuff, and you gave Yeah, just recently. That you, just happened this week. And you give him free supplies? How, how? I haven't. I haven't given him... No, um, what happens is, is that, um, I don't know, I just, I'm just like one of these people, I just collect people in my life, right? So, um, <laughs> okay. he, um, so he bought a machine and it took him forever to get this darn thing out of my house. 
And I told them, I said, look, if you don't get it soon, I'm going to have to start charging the rent. And I was always, I was just kidding. But, I mean, he was, like, so apologetic because he had, you know, he was, um, he had a trouble for work a lot. Anyway, so he finally got it out. And I don't know, he just seemed like a nice guy. I think he really liked me. Um, so we've been kind of, you know, he'll ask me questions and I respond. I mean, when people ask me questions, I respond immediately. Um, regarding the machines or questions on how to use the machine. And just lately, this past week, I guess he was bored, I don't know, and the couple of states that he went to, he was just sending me ads, like brand new ads of machines. And I've been a, a little hesitant to purchase these because I don't know if it's going to be worth it for me to buy a machine for three grand out of state and have to pay another, um, let's say, two fifty for shipping. Well, if they're already, because you've already have some very nice margins, because you said the key word, you buy on price. You don't really care about the machine if it fits your parameters where you can make profit. Uh, right. I wouldn't. At this juncture, I would be looking to add more value versus trying to go to the. Uh, what I call a race to the bottom, where you you become a commodity because once you invest too much in the machine, sometimes, and unfortunately a lot of times, you end up just breaking even to get rid of it, which is not what we want. So I would, no. you've already got a parameter. Based on what you told me, you get a machine at 2500 you try to sell it for 4500 to 5000 Keep those numbers. Don't mess with them. What you want to do okay. is expand on how many of these machines you can get at that price because once you've been experiencing these kind of margins and then you start selling and making like 700 it's, you're going to just like, I don't really want to do this anymore. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't even mess yeah, with I wasn't, it. Yeah, I wasn't sure and it wasn't something that I wanted to to do until I talked to you. No, <laughs> I, I would, okay. I, I'm like, I would say that doesn't have to be Hard, what are you happy with profit wise? You spend what's the lowest you would take if you spend twenty five hundred? A thousand? Fifteen? No. No. So you're hey, still, but no. I'm at four. You're at four. If it's if it's if the if the um fish count is really low and the hours are really low, yeah. I think one time I sold a machine um without a hat hoop. Without anything, I sold like for thirty five hundred, but it was just the machine. Okay, so without any accessories. Okay, I didn't ask that question right. So you spend uh, two thousand, then you're at four. So you want to stay? Would you go down to maybe fifteen hundred profit? That was a better question. You know, it's still close to two, but not not. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So. For you to keep those kind of margins, you got to stick with buying the way you've been buying. I wouldn't change your buying habits at all. Okay. Yeah, because, um, you know, just to give you an example, using myself, I can make more money consulting with four or five people in a month than I can selling courses and stuff all year long. That makes sense. So... It's um, what you've done is you've created a path, you've created a process, you've created price points. You just informally structure out, structure them in your mind, but you've already have a method. It's like okay, I can get this thing between two and twenty five hundred, because from what you're telling me, those are the machines you make the most profit on consistently. Yes. Oh, uh, you know, absolutely. Okay, uh, going back to my storage auction days, I created what was called buying profiles, and. I would sometimes not get the units I wanted because they got past my buying profile because, uh, just to explain, I started exclusively buying 10x15s, 10x20s. These are essentially whole households. And I could just time and time again, I could spend 300 to 700 bucks for that room, whereas here's a 5x10 or a 10x10, and I'm spending three to 400 for... 60, 70, sometimes 90% less stuff. Okay. So as long as I stuck to those buying profiles, even if the room was crappy, 
I always made a good profit. But the minute that I start going, ooh, it's so nice, ooh, it's so pretty, ooh, it's such a nice machine, uh, we suffer. So don't don't change that at all. Now, based upon this conversation, I see some more stuff because I was wondering when you were talking about social media. Now I understand because I did not know that you were buying these things from all over the nation. And then, yeah, yeah I see a lot of things we can do because one of the things you want to do is standardize your, your operation. And we've just dealt with how you sell. When you... You know, explain to me when you sit down each day, do you have a certain set of hours in the day that you just like from 9 to 12 I'm going to look or do you look randomly throughout the day? How does that work? Um, you know, I, I, I normally put like three hours in every day um, and I think I'm pretty efficient the way I look now. Um. And I'll just, like, send out, I mean, I'll send out 10 emails to people, you know, to for Craigslist ads, to buy stuff. Um, and then it's very sporadic when I hear back from people. But Usually I, late, late night in the weekends? Yeah, I mean, it could be, it's just really bizarre. It's just absolutely, it's any time, it could happen. So I keep my phone with me all the time, and then I respond immediately. Okay. So how many offers a, a week do you make? Oh, my gosh. Um, I would probably have to say at least seven. Okay. Let's look at your numbers. Sometimes I get, sometimes, um, you know, um, just like, but that doesn't mean I get multiple machines because, no, a like lot I said times before, they I would. Back. I'm sorry? Sometimes they don't even answer back, so yeah, I, I totally get that. It, yeah, so it's and it's like this one machine that I liked in Florida. Um, he listed it for thirty-five. I offered him twenty-five, and he went to three. Well, I just I don't I don't want to buy it at three. I want to buy it at twenty-five. So I didn't pursue that. But the the one in Louisiana now it's a four-needle machine. It's not a six-needle machine. But I'm getting that for eighteen hundred dollars. And they sell around here. There's like two people that have them listed for five thousand dollars. So again, even if I get it, yeah, pardon no, me? no. Once again, stick to your buying formula because you're killing okay. me. Just if they go past, I mean, they, you you have a buying profile that maybe you don't adhere to, but you have one. You want your machines with under twenty five hundred. That's where you want to stay. If you can't get it past that, leave it alone because it's just going to. With the additional cost of shipping, paying for crating and stuff, is you're going to get to that point where you're just not happy with the profit. Right. So stick to that. And this is some of the numbers that I'm coming up with. You make seven offers a week, so you're making what, what 25 to 28 offers a month? Yeah, at least. And you get how many machines per month when you do that? Uh, I normally have a surplus. So, routinely, I've been buying, like, at least two. Two a month. So, it takes you 28 offers. Now, this is something. Have you been doing this? Going back to everyone that said no and seeing if they still got it listed. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm not that great on record keeping. Um, but what was really interesting is that how you inspired me, there's a, a gentleman here, and he's starting to make um, custom pocket squares for gentlemen's suit. Super neat guy. Um, and I knew that he wasn't really in the market when he came to the house, but I was so impressed with what he was doing from absolutely nothing and how he taught himself and how he learned about the garment industry in New York. But I told him to come over. I kind of showed him what could be done with monogramming. Um, and I told him, I said, look, when I find a machine that's in your price point, regardless, I'm going to buy it, and I'll let you know. So I just talked to him last week, and I said, in about a week or so, I should be getting an embroidery machine in. And he was, he, he was just... Um, 
they just interviewed him on the news for kind of what he's doing now, and he's, and he's really super excited. So I think, too, is that you want to also promote goodwill, you know, with people, because, I mean, who knows where he's going to be in a couple of years. Well, I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, where I was going was, this is a tactic that I used to use quite a bit on Craigslist. You'll meet someone, and then you make them an offer, and they'll be like, oh, no, no, I want this, I want this, right? Then I would yeah. wait two to four weeks, and I would go back, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. And I was like, hey, I don't know, do you still have such and such? And if they caught back, if they pop back, yes, really quick, then I offer uh-huh. them maybe even two or three hundred dollars less than what I offered them initially. And many said no, but about 70 percent took my second lower offer because they were tired of dealing with it. Most people are not salespeople. And that's why if you, I would not be surprised if a lot of people who gave you a hard no four weeks ago, the stuff may still be available and they softened up on that price because reality has hit them. Yeah, and they need to. They need to flip it or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, play. I need to definitely do that. I'm not great with record keeping, so that would be something that I would have to have some kind of um, system in place. But when we I, I initially talked about um, increasing my revenue, um, I'm not really sure how that is going to be accomplished um, by just selling these alone. Well, okay. First thing we're going to do. We're going to make what you're already doing efficient and make more money. Okay. Because what you just told me, all right, let's look at the numbers. And this is my training from Rental Crate. Uh, our goals was we had to make 250 phone calls a week. Now, a phone call was talking to someone. Answering machines didn't count. If you did that, you were going to sell X amount of product. Numbers, I mean, even if you're just a horrible salesperson. So... One of the things we're going to do, and this is why we got to get you efficient first, more efficient. You're already efficient, get you more efficient. Because if you can make 30 offers in a week, you'll probably get those one or two machines. So you got to make more offers and list more to sell faster because you're getting people who, if they're finding you by search, they've been looking for a while. And, and this is something else too, because you may not know it, but you have a listing pattern. And people like, oh, she's always listing stuff. People will begin to recognize your ads if they've been looking a long time. Is that bad or good? Uh, it could be both. Uh, sometimes people who don't like your prices will flag your ads because they're like, I'm tired of looking at it. And it could be good because it inspires confidence. That it's like, oh, they're consistently doing this. This isn't like they're going to just disappear. So, you know, it just really depends. I think in this okay. category, it's probably pretty good because... You can is you can brand yourself one way or another, and that's why you know I want you to send me a copy of your ad. Just send me go, just send me your ad, and I'll look at it and tell you what's wrong with it, how to improve it. And there's a, I just see a lot of things that you can do to make your ads bit better, and I can see a lot of things you can do to make your process better. And this is something that I learned. Once you hammer down the processes. Profits come out of efficiency. Uh, this is some I study because uh, I forget the name of the company, but they were, they they got their processes so efficient that they made twenty five percent more money without selling more stuff. But this was a larger company, you know. They had factory right, trim. Right. But your situation, you've got a lot of things to do because I've just got some notes here. Uh, but like I said, we're still going to hammer down this process thing because I got more questions for you, but. I see you opening up a store, Shopify, uh, the YouTube channel, and you can do, you can just put stuff up there for the public, or you can put private videos, but everything that you have to redo, you know, the most frequently asked questions, you should do a 10 minute video saying how to do this, and yeah, keep it at 10 minutes, maybe 15, but if it's a really complex thing, break it up into three 10 minute videos. And that's going to be a selling point because, Hey, you know, I offer these videos to teach you how to use it. And if you really want me to walk you through it, uh, I'll give you the first 
hour free, you know, when you come pick up the machine. And after that, I'm going to charge you X, Y, and Z. Okay. That's why I got to teach you how to use this hangout thing. And what do you think about my idea about having quote unquote embroidery lesson where especially for people who just want to get things embroidered, I show them how to do it. They kind of do it themselves. I think it's good on one end and it's a trap on the other. Okay. You know, because when the first time we talked, you want to do the tenure thing on Puerto Rico by the house and my er, my goal here is to make you a manager and you doing that you if you enjoy it and want to do it that's fine but if you're strictly mm-hmm. doing it to earn more income it's a trap okay you can make money with it but you gotta advertise that and the thing is I'm like why were you gonna do that was it just to get more money do you enjoy it or no no it's just to um maybe start to um, get some more interest in the machines and maybe people who are never thinking about getting one. No, maybe no, they'll... okay, no. Just, okay. Don't, yeah, don't even do that. Um, oh, can I, th- can I mention one other thing? Is that, um, so I have a meeting with a woman on the 5th who's selling her, I mean, basically her embroidery business is already closed. You, you put that in the text. I think that's great. That's a I have lot no of idea what I'm doing. In well, regards to that. Well, I actually, that's what got me and started my first uh, business uh, when I left my last job, GC Solutions. Nancy, uh, it was JDF. They were an aviation company. I sold their furniture for 50% commission. Up in that point, it was the most money I had ever made in my life. So okay. you got to look and see what she has. Right. And then, you know, once you see what she has, then we could talk about it. Because I, I've I've done that before and I can walk you through it. And it could be, you know, she's got a lot of stuff, it could be a lot of money. Just really depends on what well, she, she has. Well she does. I mean she you know, at first she told me she wanted to sell the business for seventy five thousand. There's just absolutely no way because she's already closed it. I mean, she has so many customers. And this has been, her business has been closed for now maybe almost two months. All these people are going other other places. And she's like, oh, but my customers are really loyal. It doesn't matter. If you need it done and you're not providing that service, service people are going to go other places. And someone who's coming in just to buy the, the whole entire business, they're also buying the goodwill. And if you if you haven't kept that up, what all you're basically selling is the the machines. Pretty accurate so assessment. Would, I'm sorry? No, accurate assessment because the minute those doors okay. close, every day that she stays closed, those people who are so loyal are going to forget her. Oh, oh abso- absolutely, especially around here um, in this part of the country. So... Um, what I told her, and this is what I was going to do, is on the 5th, I'm going to go there and um, do a complete assessment, as, the best that I can, about what she has. And um, and she only has it uh, listed in one area, which is Facebook, which is ridiculous. And I said, let me go, ho- then I'll go home. I'll, I'll, I'll get a game plan and what I think we could do. Um, but the problem is, is that, so she wanted 75 and then when it all comes down is unfortunately she didn't do the loan through her business. I think she got like, um, a second mortgage on her house, which that's now she owes $35,000. Like that's kind of maybe the minimum, but I mean, she's the kind of person who's like, cut off your nose to spite, spite your face. Because she said to me, she goes, I'd rather take it to the grave with me than give it away. Something that I've built 15 years. And I'm like, well, maybe you've built this up for 15 years, but you you, you just you dug the grave yourself. Why because you're not it? keeping it open. I think, I think a lot of health reasons. 
not only her, she, she was diagnosed with cancer, but also, um, her, her, um, daughter is very sick. She's old. Her daughter's older and adult, but sick too. So I think she wants to just, uh, close shop and move. So where are these machines? Are they still in the building or does she have them in her basement? Oh no. The, these machines are in the base, in her basement. Um, they're about 15 years old. And they are enormous. So whereas my one-head machine is 75 pounds, um, her one-head machine is probably one, maybe 150. So, so the machines are, um, you can have a single-head machine with 15 needles. She also has a double-head machine with 15 needles each. And then she has another four-head machine. So not only does she, someone has to get that out of the basement, but then transport it. And most of the time, you have to like take, you have to do like some construction to the doors to open them up to be able to even get it out. Man. She's not really thinking all this through. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Well, still, you know, still go. It could be an opportunity. And her okay. position may have softened between now and the last time you talked to her because I've had people tell me no to my first price and take almost half, you know, six weeks later. Okay. Reality has a way of tapping us all in the head. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I see some stuff here that we can do. And then I got to teach you how okay. to use this... Um, this the software uh, where you can teach people remotely. Okay. Because what you can do is I give you the first hour free, and then after that, you know, it's X amount of dollars, and that's another source of income. Because what you want to do is start to remove as much of this business out of your house as possible. I can see you having the machines there; they come pick them up, but. These things can kind of take over your house, these businesses. And that's yeah. one of the reasons I asked you if you really were into the meetings and the te- the training and stuff. Because if you're not, there's better ways to do this. So I would just pass on that. Because once we not necessarily clean up your act, but give what you have structure. Streamline it. Yeah, streamline it. Give you sure. structure. Um, uh-huh. I can see you selling these things online in a store. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Shopify store is not that expensive. You've already got the PayPal account. Uh, they hooks up with PayPal or Stripe. And what's going to sell it is teaching people how to use it. So you've already figured that out. You just have to go ahead and systemize that where you're not doing the same thing over and over again. Well, the only concern, too, is that if I sell it in a store, then I'm having to pay tax on it, whereas I'm not doing it right now. But do you think I'll be able to make more money to not worry about the tax that I'm making because I'm doing more in volume? Well, you're not going to stop your Craigslist hustle. You're going to put some in the store. You're going to sell. Because, see, see, you already have this uh, mindset. You already know what you can sell on Craigslist, and then you put your more expensive stuff in the store. Yeah, you'll still be collecting cash on the sales you can and then the stuff you have to sell online. Yeah, you. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Seriously, I didn't even think about that. So I can even list her thing on my embroidery store yeah. for her. You could. I would probably put her stuff in the industrial section of Craigslist. If they're 15 okay. years old, I don't know what the life cycle is on these things, but... I do know when I was selling equipment, when it gets that old, people are like, eh, unless it's dirt cheap, they're just not really looking at it. I could Ab- be wrong. Absolutely. I could no, be- no, no, no. You're, you're absolutely, because it, because you're not only investing in an expensive piece of the equipment, but if that thing goes down, it's, I mean, it's like the forehead is like uh, close to a thousand pounds. It's like it's not something that's easily moved. You have to pay to have someone come in and fix it, and it's very, very expensive. Okay, interesting. 
Yeah, because uh, can I can I ask you this? How much should should I do a certain percent of what I sell? Like, what is my? Because it's kind of like a uh, being a broker. Oh no! Once you look at it, because th- this is the thing. Before you make any things, you got to see if this stuff is worth selling. You already have enough experience to know if this stuff is worth selling and what you could probably make off of it. And uh-huh. this is my deal. This is what I had with JDA. I had a signed agreement, 50% of whatever I sold the stuff for. And this is something else, too. You got to get this in writing because people get fuzzy. <laughs> they get fuzzy on these things. So, it, I mean, yeah, not like, oh, like a, I, can, I can see myself getting really shafted with this. Well, what you, well, the way that I'm going to teach you to do it, you won't get shafted at all because what you're going to do is you're going to do the sale and you're going to collect the money. That's why you got to have this written thing so you don't have this powwow that way. Because when it's in writing, and you know, this isn't for legal things, it's just, hey, this is their agreement, this is what we agreed on. And then, you know, down the road, when it's like, say someone comes in and wants to buy four machines for 20000 that's going to be ten grand for you if you agree to the 50%. She may not even go for the 50%. You won't know until Oh, you she won't. I just, yeah, I know how she is. There's no way 50. But. Well, you know. Just present it to her and see what she does because she's got the machines, but you will be beating with the people. You'll be answering the questions. You'll be doing a lot of lead work. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, yeah, uh, this is how I ran my business. All those Craigslist sales where people paid me in cash, they went in my pocket and my partner's pocket. We didn't pay taxes on that. I did that for years. Cash... You know, I never had, like, a high-consumption lifestyle. Well, by my standards, some people may think it was high-consumption, but I never had a problem. I mean, you know, we would sometimes pocket, you know, split three to six grand on the weekend. Okay. Yeah, you don't want, you don't. It's really nice. I don't want to get, I don't want to give that up. Okay. Well, no, no, you're not giving it up. What we're going to do is. I want you to think of it as having two businesses, your Craigslist hustle and then the online thing. All right. That's, that's definitely more palatable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That way. No, no. You do not. No, no, no. And the thing is with PayPal, they don't. They, this just recently started maybe two, three years ago. But the threshold is 20000 before they send like a K99, I believe, whatever they decide to look at. Um, so it's, it'll, be, it'll be that. And then... Say someone buys it online, then they come and they pay you in cash. Now, one thing is, as you start to structuralize this and send sell the business, some people are going to want to pay you with their business credit card. I would not take a check. Um, I've never, no, no uh, way. Yeah, I've never no taken way. checks for any of this stuff. But they may want to pay you with their business credit card. They may want to invoice for business purposes. So you'll run that stuff out of that store, and then you'll continue to run your Craigslist ads. Now this yeah, is. I actually, I lost, I lost a sale once because she wanted to pay with, um, with a credit card, and I just didn't have any way for her to do it. So. Okay, I got a question. You, you got a PayPal account because it seems it's in your husband's name. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What? Why is it in his name and not yours? And I'm not trying to be messy. I'm just wondering for greater understanding. I think he, I think it's, um, he had to buy some, um, textbooks at one point, and, um, the person wanted it, um, to sell it with PayPal, and that's it, and that's the reason why it was set up with his name. I mean, I could definitely do it with mine, it's not any particular reason. Okay, um. But that was, that was like years ago that he needed some very specialized textbooks, and, he had to buy them online. So. Okay, okay. I was just asking. Uh, what you're going to do is get yourself a Square account. Okay. They're free. I mean, you don't have to do it today, but they, they'll send you a reader, and you can accept credit cards online and okay. on your phone. And then for your store, you can do Stripe. But, you know, because uh, 
what I've planned is, you know, right now this week, I am just, I'm on a fact finding mission because the more information I know, the more I can help you. And like I said, I had a lot of three hours today because you never know what's going to happen with the online stuff. Well, not the online stuff, but the hangouts because everyone doesn't know how to use it. But this could be really, really pivotal to you in your teaching and stuff because this, it, it, it's, it's helped me out tremendously. Okay. So. But yeah, you've got a lot going on. Um, what I'm doing... Oh, uh, hopefully. What I'm doing is I'm recording this on my phones so I can go over it again. And the co private course that I'm creating for you, all of our conversations and stuff are going to be there. Okay. So you can refer back to them if you want to because once I get this out of my phone, I'm going to upload it there and then... Because I'm going to listen to it, then I'm going to go through some more stuff. Because how many hours are you? Because I, I didn't want to like take you out of your groove since you do three hours. Because I'm trying to keep these sessions to an hour. Uh, we went a little bit over, but I'm going to call you again, and we're going to set this up again for Wednesday. Because like I said, the first week is we, in the first phase. Sure. We're, we're going to do a lot more talking. So I'm going to go over this stuff, come up with a game plan, and look at some things, and. They'll give you, you say, on the 5th, you're meeting with her. See how that goes. And then today, when you say three hours, because I'm still not really clear on that, do you sit down and just go hard for three hours, or is it three hours throughout the day? No. I'm like, I go hard. So three hours. I'm very, I'm very focused. It's just sometimes it's like, and I feel like I can do more. I just don't know what else to do and I hate this is what I hate the most it's like consignment stores I hate for somebody else to make a profit off of like what I'm selling <laughs> so what that's funny well when you're putting in the kind of investment that you are I can see why because you you get a machine for 2500 and they sell it for 5000 you've made hardly you've made no money really yeah, if you get a, so. in the consignment store, if you get buy a machine for twenty five hundred and they charge fifty percent, and typically oh yeah, yeah Exa you, exactly, you made no money. That would just and, be and there are quite a few online places that will do that for you. We'll kind of like list it and sell it. But um, if you get a second, if you look up this white uh, website, it's called Digit Smith, and basically you can list. You're in, it's free, and you can list all of your embroidery supplies on there. I haven't done it yet, but. Digit Smith. Uh-huh. And that's probably what I'll use to um, sell her equipment, one of the places. Let's see. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, it looks like just a big old bulletin board. Yep. Let's see. What kind of traffic is this place getting? Hold on a, a second. A lot. Oh, I can tell you in a minute. Let's go here. Let's see. Wow. Oh, not as much as I thought. They're getting like 40,000 hits to 35,000, 45 to 30. Kind of went up in August and it's gone down. But, but the thing is, I will say all of the traffic is extremely qualified and focused. So that's a big difference. Uh, they could still be doing millions with that in terms of uh, traffic. I mean, people selling stuff. Oh, yeah. Because they've got an ad up here, too. So, that's how they're making some money. But it looks just like a, it looks like a forum. It, it is in, in, in some respects. Um, but then they have a whole area that is just dedicated for machines. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, and and so many people don't know about this, and that's why they buy stuff off of eBay. That's really high. You know, some of it's really high priced. Oh, there's a lot of ways to do this. All right, now. Well, see, you were having computer issues this morning, or was it just trying to get into the Hangout? I think just I getting just... into the, the, the Hangout, I think. Um, I mean, I, I can try. I'll definitely have it up and running by Wednesday for sure. Well, no. Uh, what I was going to do is... This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I'm going to create a Gmail account for you. Okay. And then, you know, I'll just give you a password and we change and all this other stuff. So let me put this in my notes. I'm going to create a Gmail account for you. And then I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do Google Hangouts. Or okay. I may, yeah, we'll, we'll do both because I got Zoom and Google Hangouts. So create email account. And tutorial. Because one of the reasons that I went to Zoom is Google Hangouts has a learning curve and it can be brutal sometimes okay. but we'll work that out because the thing is one of the reasons I charge so much is it takes this kind of Q&A and talking and going over stuff to streamline things because let's say give you the skill set of learning how to do training online you can make that same 75 and just say look uh, and this is why you got to keep a list of all your customers because what you can do is email marketing say you sold 20 machines you have everyone's email address you can say look I'm doing an online training on how to make this stitch this is the price this is the day so you get 10 people who pay you like uh, let's just say 140 that's 1400 bucks for maybe an hour two hour work wow yeah this is why I don't do physical stuff I mean a lot of people think I'm full of shit but I used to work seven days a week and we made really good money. But the thing is, it's not, this is totally different because our monthly overhead was about 35 to 40 grand. We brought in mostly 80 to 90 trucks and stuff. But this, the J months, January, June, July, we didn't really do that much. I still Uh bought, but we were just paying bills. So that kind of stuff, whereas uh, a friend was telling me, this lady, she did an online training. She had 200 people pay her 50 bucks. That was 10 grand for an hour. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. So that's a component because as I hear you, you, you're like, well, this does this, this has this head, this does this type of stitch where there's this accessory, there's this bat. You really know this stuff in inside and out. That's how you can do the training. That's what I'm talking about, about uh, learning how to present and do these other things. And, you know, like I said, I've got all of this recorded and I'm going to go over it again and then I'll just make it a little bit more formal. I've already added that course to the to your uh, user ID and the hustlerskungfu.com. So okay. just give me a day or so to get everything together. You know, it'll just make sense because this way, as we go through this, we're building a course and you can kind of go back over it if you want to later on. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Because as far as um, what you had just mentioned about um, doing videos and setting up for a course, um, there is hardly anything online to show you how to use the machine. I mean, it was so painful. When I first got my first one, there was maybe three people that kind of showed you how to thread the machine, but that's it. And that's why I was like, just don't, I mean, you could put, it's, it's, it's like a, a dual edge, because if you put it on YouTube for free, it's going to be hard to get people to pay you for it. But if you keep it in a private uh, course setting and just give people like free access to it, it's just going to make more sense in terms of making money because YouTube can get you we'll just have to see when we get there because I don't know how that's going to work because you've already built yourself a customer base and from what you're telling me 
more listing and more searching is just going to bring more more profits. Okay. All right. So we're just going to set this up. We're going to conclude for the day. And what I'm going to do, probably by Tuesday, I'll have this stuff up again, some recommendations. And then we will talk again Wednesday because I need to block that time out on the calendar. Um, okay. What time? I was getting ready to ask you. Same time, 9.30? Sounds right. Okay. So we'll do that. And uh, th I'm looking forward to this. I think this is going to be really fun. Oh, well, I'm excited. I, I, yeah, I'm ready to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Fantastic. Well, have, have, a great, have a great day. You too. I'll talk to you Wednesday. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. Let's see. All right. And...